Today we'll be going through how to install an SSA client in Windows 11 and be able to use it through the Windows terminal. This is a feature that I use quite often, making it much easier to remote into other computers on your network, as well as public servers and computers. The installation process is fairly simple. First click on the start menu and use the search bar to search for something called optional features. And it's important that you put in optional features because it won't necessarily show up unless you type it this way. So confirm that you have this optional features in the system settings and that's what you want to open up. Once you click on that, you get a new window pop up much like this in Windows 11. And what we're interested in is to add an optional feature. You can see below that there's many features already installed, but we don't necessarily care about these. Instead, we want to hit view features so we can search for one. And now let's scroll down until we find something called open SSH client. Here we go. I see it right here. It is fairly small here at 1.33 megabytes. Just know that you are alphabetically ordered here. So if I click on this, it will say open SSH base secure shell SSH client for secure key management and access to remote machines and is exactly what we want. And if you're new and stopping by today, make sure to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more operating system tips and tricks. So I'm going to hit the checkbox here. And then at the bottom of the optional feature dialog box, you'll notice that there's now a next button because you can select multiple features if you wanted to add multiple ones at the same time and hit next whenever you're ready to install. Here you're being told which things are going to be installed. As you can tell on mine, OpenSSH client is the only one selected. And down below, I have the install button. I'm going to click install now and the OpenSSH client will begin installing. It won't take long. The package is very small. And once things are installed, you can verify by looking at the installed features below and trying to find open SSH client. Notice how it now says 10.3 megabytes. Well, it's larger than predicted. That's Windows for you, but all said and done, it's not too big of a footprint. Now with this installed on your Windows 11 computer, smash that like button for me so this video gets shared with more people. And in order to test the new SSH client, I'm gonna exit out of here. I have a server on the local network. That's a Ubuntu 20.04 server installation. And if you need to install Linux on a computer, make sure to check out some of the other videos on my channel where I pretty much have gone through every Linux distribution installation process. What we want to do is start up a command prompt. So again, hit start and then type in terminal at the top. This will launch the Windows terminal app or you can run command prompt. It really doesn't matter. It'll work on both. Click on terminal and that will launch a new Windows terminal for you. You can also click down on the arrow and hit command prompt if you want a command prompt instead. It really doesn't matter whether you're running PowerShell or command prompt, this will work on both. So use whatever one you're familiar with. And currently I'm in the users directory of Savvy, which is the computer's name. And what I'm interested in is remoting and logging into my Linux server via an SSH tunnel. All right, now I'm over on my Ubuntu server where I want to show you my current IP address that I have, which I can do if I just simply go up here, hit my wired connection, check out my wired settings, and look into the settings here. You'll notice my current IP address here says 172.168.1.7. This is important for me to know because this is the server I'm trying to connect to locally in and this is the IP address I'll need to connect. Another way to do this is launch a terminal here as well and issue IP space A, press enter, and you'll notice right here the same IP address listed under an ethernet adapter port, and that's really it. And back to the Windows side of things, I just needed the IP address. The way this works is if you type SSH space, a username of the computer that you're trying to log in or connect to remotely, for example, mine is Savvy Nick on the Ubuntu server that I have going. Of course, this can be any platform, server, or computer that you're trying to connect to with OpenSSH installed. And then I'm going to do an at symbol followed by the IP address that I had just found. So that was 172.168.1.7 for me. Of course, if you're connecting to some kind of a public IP address, you can, of course, replace your IP address 
with the public IP address. And I'll let you know that SSH also accepts domain names. So for example, if you had a server on google.com, you would do SSH space the savvy Nick or username at google.com instead of typing in physical public or local IP address. Now I'm going to press enter here. And since it's the first time I'm connecting to this SSH server, so it's verifying with me if I want to continue connecting to the server, I'm going to type yes and press enter. And now I'm being asked for a password. Now this is the user's password for the computer or server that you're trying to log into. So since I'm trying to log into the user called Savvy Nick, I'm gonna type their password in. If you're typing and nothing is showing up, that doesn't mean the password isn't being typed in. Instead, it is being typed in. This is just the default way of not showing your password so no one can see it while you're typing in. So just press enter once you've typed your password in and congratulations if you see something similar to what I do here because there's a bunch of messages and I am officially logged into my, which I call Savvy Nick and the username is Savvy Nick for the server. You have now successfully used your SSH client tools directly over the command line or command prompt on your Windows 11 computer. This is a great and easy way to connect to remote computers in order to manage them and is much easier instead of installing some open SSH shell app or program that's available for Windows. But if you don't like using the Windows command prompt, know that there is graphical methods to doing this as well. For example, some are PuTTY, ZOC, Secure, CRT, TerraTerm, Windows Terminal, and Xterm, all available if you simply Google them and they all get the job done similarly. But I believe this is the easiest and most efficient way since it's already available on the system and you have a command prompt or terminal already available. And you don't have to install extra applications. That's not already native to Windows, but instead you just enable this feature and you're on the go. So now that I'm on the server, I'll show you that I can actually issue commands. So if I do a clear, it's gonna clear out the terminal, the console on my server. And if I want to explore the server, for example, I wanna list the contents of where I'm at right now. Since I'm in the home users directory, home savvy Nick, I have all of these things inside of it and I can even change directories if I wanted to. Let's say I wanted to go to the home directory and not the home users directory. There we go. And now I can control permissions and have complete control of the server from here. I can even go and make changes to my web server and all these things are wonderful to know in order to administer commands on the server. It's a fantastic tool. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe below Hit the notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. Don't forget to smash the like button and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.